Hello. Since I got to Yeshiva a little bit early today, I figured we'd start from uh, with a message from our sponsors. And our sponsor is you, uh, at least in uh, potentially, if not actually. Um, according to uh, my stats on Buzzsprout, then there are approximately six to 10 regular listeners uh, to the episodes of this podcast. And uh, I don't know who you are, but uh, thank you. Uh, for your support. Um, and if you are actually supporting me uh, and my production efforts in this podcast financially through my Patreon, uh, then I really thank you. And if you're not, then I would ask uh, that you consider uh, maybe pledging $3 a month, uh, which is the bare minimum amount. Um, it would really help me out a lot. And I also want to mention uh, out of the three podcasts I currently have, this one is by far the most uh, cost ineffective because uh, I give this year on average four days a week and each episode is an hour long. And, and as a result of that, I end up going over time in terms of my monthly allotment from Buzzsprout and have to pay extra for that. So any extra dollar you can uh, uh, contribute will uh, go a long way. And if you are a regular listener to the podcast, then uh, then your contributions will be much appreciated. And look, I mean, we're going to start the topics of Ahavas Hashem and Yeras Hashem today. So if you feel that this podcast uh, contributes to your Ahavas Hashem and Yeras Hashem, then uh, perhaps it would be a worthy uh, uh, a worthy project to support. Uh, thank you. Okay, so we are resuming our, what do you call it? Our regular Pikius? <laughs> I don't know what we call it, our, uh, our Hilchzi Sodia Torah thing, but because we're going to start a new Perek with new mitzvos, we're going to revisit, we're going to stick to our methodology of of doing the Sefer Mitzvahs first, because that was really written as the introduction to the Mishnah Torah, uh, and then going into the Mishnah Torah itself. So I closed this on my computer. Let me just see what this is. So we're starting with Sefer Mitzvahs. Um, mitzvahs is a Gimel uh, and Dalid, which is Av Hashem and Yer which we're going to do together, because you'll see from the Ram that they go together. Um, and I'm displaying on the screen the Kafich translation, which is my preferred translation. OK, so he says, Ha-mitzvah ha-shalishis, the third mitzvah. So again, first mitzvah was Anochi, second one was uh, Yichud Hashem. Then we got mitzvah shalishis hu ha shnitz tavinu al ahavaso yisale. So it's the mitzvah we've been commanded uh, regarding love of him or his love. Uh, exalted is he. Vuhu, which is shenis bonin v'nistakel v'mitzvosav v'tzivuyav u'ulosav that we gain, we, we, you know, uh, how do you translate this bone in? <laughs> I think people usually translate as comprehend. You want to pass me that? Yeah. Um, we we're starting with the Sefer Mitzvah before we do the Mishnah Torah because this is a new topic. Um, people say contemplate. I like that, but I wish there were a good word that also involved uh, the activity of Tavuna. Strive to understand might be better. Strive to understand and ministakil and gaze at his mitzvos, his commandments. Don't know the difference between mitzvahs and tzivuyav are, and his his actions, his creations. Okay, k'day shenasi gehu, so that we apprehend him. Okay, I guess nasi gehu v'nis aneg b'hasagaso taklis ha'oneg, and that we derive the utmost enjoyment uh, in that comprehension, in his comprehension. Okay, I'm actually just gonna double check it against the. Um, Again, when, when you use translations, then I think there's no shame in using multiple translations because you're already not in the original language. And so I'm going to use Chevelle's. Is this Chevelle? Yeah, and see uh, what he says. So he says, uh, to dwell upon and contemplate his commandments, his injunctions, and his works, so that we may obtain a conception of him and in conceiving him, attain absolute joy. Similar. Okay, but it is uh, Nasige who is, uh, is uh, apprehend him. So it means that he's going to enjoy it because I. Is that the yeah. All right. So this is going to be one of the well, just uh, a spoiler alert here, right? One of the the I think the the key activity that we're going to be doing today is trying to reconcile the presentation of Avos Hashem and Yiras Hashem in the Sefer Hamitzvos with the one in the Mishnah Torah because they're different. And one of the differences is here he puts the emphasis on the the oneg on the joy or the uh, the pleasure, and the Sefer and, and in the Mishnah Torah he doesn't. So yeah, we'll see. Okay. Uh, so the Pasuk, it says in Sifri that the Pasuk says, you shall love Hashem your God. Do I know how to love God? How to love the uh, Hamakum, the, uh, what does the footnote 15 say? 
Hamakom Ubarsha Kriyasa Butmiha. Okay, fine. So it's it's clear that it's a rhetorical question. Yeah, so Hamakom is the uh the true existence is how I like translating Hamakom according to the Rambam, literally the place, right? Why uh, is that why is the place um I think he explains, if I remember correctly, in the Mornavuchin that like the 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 existent it's referring to God as the independent existence that everything else is contingent on, and place is like the substratum of whatever the object is that's in it. So like the you know like like let's say like uh that he is the place of the world and the world is not his place. So he's not subject to place. He's not in a place, but he is the thing that is like so to speak housing the world in not the pen. Theistic sense or pantheistic, but the fact that like everything is existing because of him, propped up in existence, so to speak, because of him. Yeah. Um, Tom Lomar, uh, so the question is, how do you love God? So the Pasuk says, you had you shall, uh, these words shall be, uh, that I command you today on your heart. That through the through this, meaning through these words, you recognize the one who spoke and the universe came into existence. Now that's interesting because the words that it's commanding you really is Torah and mitzvos. So what does that have to do with recognizing Misha Amar Vahaya Olam? I you know recognizing Misha Nasa Nasa Torah, I get it, but like, you know, how are you gaining Misha Amar Vahaya Olam is like a reference to God as the creator, I would, I would assume, you know. So like how are you getting that from Hayu Vahayu Hadvarim Haele? You know? Yeah. Okay. And also I think there's a problem with um let me just look at the footnotes here. 14, 15, 6. Oh, never mind. So, because I think there is another, I think there's another version of this that doesn't end in that way. Uh, I'll have to see if I can find it later on. Okay, fine. Um, so then, Hine, so the, uh, uh, we've been, exp- uh, this has been explained to us, or we've explained to you, his bonus hasaga, that through striving to understand, you will. Comp, you know, uh, apprehend that which is to be apprehended. You'll attain the, the comprehension. There he goes with the emphasis on the pleasure again, and you'll find the enjoyment. Okay, and then the love will be of necessity. So wait a minute then. So what's the relationship between the love and the enjoyment? Because up until now, it sounded like he was saying, um, what is the mitzvah is to attain the enjoyment. So I just assumed... So that, to attain the enjoyment through love. I'd say the opposite. The love That's exactly what you just said, right? Is what? once you have the enjoyment, uh-huh. the love will come of necessity. Oh. Right? But either way, the love and the enjoyment are not the same thing. Right? He's saying... I guess so, right? Well, it's got to be bigger than I guess so, <laughs> right? Uh, you tell me if you guess so or you know so or you don't think so. <laughs> no, no, no. He's bonus to the saga. So one yeah, step. Yeah, yeah. So there's, there's four steps. Right. He's bonus. Yeah. Then you get the hasaga. And that's hasaga of God, uh, apprehending God. Yeah. The hasaga, bimsa right. hatanug. Then you find the enjoyment. Right. The az tie ahava And then the love will come of necessity. Right. Yeah, it seems like he's saying enjoyment because of love. He's yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand what is what is the love that's not the enjoyment? Like, isn't the enjoyment like isn't love just that you enjoy that? Okay, so that that's I guess what we're gonna have to figure out with the mission to our change of plans. By the way, I'm realizing I've forgotten how drastically different the <laughs> Sefer Mitzvah is. So I think what we should do is uh, do Ava today and Yura tomorrow because Yura is a whole other animal. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, so, I missed the intro. What are we doing today? Uh, we uh, huh. <laughs> so uh, just to summarize here, right? Is we start off with the um, the Sefer Mitzvos on Ahava, and he's putting tremendous emphasis. So so far, we've noted a couple of differences, uh, which is that he's putting the emphasis on the enjoyment. Well, we, actually, technically, we haven't seen the differences yet because we haven't done the Mishnah Torah. <laughs> but I'm, I'm telling you, um, he's talking about the enjoyment. And uh, he also is talking about uh, arriving at it through mitzvos and Torah and hayu hadvarim ha'ele. That's how you get it. And then this last sentence here is the one that we just were uh, paused on, which is hine bihis bonunus through contemplation of the mitzvos tu hasaga you will gain an apprehension of God. The yimsa hatanu and then he'll find enjoyment. The az and then the love will follow of necessity. And- 
one of these steps. That's what's unclear, right? Because he started off by saying, oh, did I skip? I skipped a phrase uh, early on. Um, we have, uh, starting from the beginning again. I skipped that phrase. And this is the, the tachlis. So the question here, tachlis, does that mean the purpose of or the utmost level of right. the love that was commanded? Because if you stop there, it sounds like you're saying the love and the enjoyment are synonymous, but it's almost a question of sheer. Like you have to reach this degree where you enjoy it, and that enjoyment is the love. But then once he goes into this other sifre, then now it sounds like the the enjoyment uh, produces the love, and they're not synonymous. Yeah. Okay. Let's go on. Let's get the big picture first. Let's go on, and then we'll have we'll go back. Ukvar Amru. We're skipping back to uh, first one line. Ukvar Amru. After the last part we read, uh, they have already stated shemitzvah Oh, here we go. Here's another big difference. This mitzvah also includes gam shenakre es kol bnei adam laavodaso yisale, that we call all people to his service, may be exalted ule emunabo, and to conviction in him. What does that mean? To call people. Uh, it means to get people to serve God, like like invite them. Like that's a mitzvah. That's part mitzvah of this mitzvah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that's another thing he doesn't mention in the Mishnah Torah, at least not in uh, Yisodia Torah, as we'll see. Um, also strange that Kafach uses the word emuna here after objecting to it so much in the first two mitzvahs. And if you look at the Arabic, uh, you'll notice, um, yeah, you'll notice that it actually is the word emuna. Oh yeah. Right. So you see. I can't, I can't do it. Um, so the word on the line, the last word on the line is ba. Okay. And the word before that is clearly alaman, right? <laughs> right. So this is not itikad. This is not the emuna of the first mitzvah or the second mitzvah. Right. So I would translate this as trust in him or reliance upon him. Like a type? Yeah. Yeah. Like reliance upon, like, like kel melch ne'eman, you know, right. as opposed to conviction in his existence right. obviously he holds that there's gonna to have to be conviction in his existence but just based on Cox's translation I, I think that's what uh i don't think it means conviction in his existence here okay then he says lafi shakashir ata oe this mishu because when you love someone to halalenu utashabchenu the tikra bene adam liadi do so then you will praise him and uh and laud him and call people to his friendship uh, or his dearness. This is by way of analogy. So too, if you have loved Hashem in truth, uh, based on that which you have uh, comprehended from the recognition of his reality, uh, then you will, without a doubt, call to the simpletons and fools, you'll call them to the knowledge of the truth that you have known. So it's interesting that he says this is Derek Marshall, because that makes it sound like it just happens to be that with, like in real Ava, there's like this desire to, you know, talk about the person. Yeah. And then it happens to be that in this fake Ava with God, it's not real Ava. And like, <laughs> Why is it not real Ava? Well, you because saying you're saying because Derek Marshall? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, first of all, I wouldn't say that it's, um, that it is a uh, fake Ava. Right. It's yeah. a different that's kind good. of ava. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. yeah, 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 right. So in this different kind of ava, it just happens to be that it lines up in that same way, that mm -hmm. the same result of spreading it to other people happens to be. So let me tell you, tell me if this is what your question is, yeah. uh, is that the fact that he already, he already defined the mitzvah, right? Which is seeking knowledge of God and having this enjoyment and something, something about love, right? <laughs> okay. Right. And then he says, and also included in it is calling people to God's service. And that is another thing that could be, com could be compared to human love. Mm -hmm. So is your question, I'm just trying to get your question clear. Yeah. Is your question like, why does the mitzvah include these two dimensions of love? Like, like what, what, yeah. what's with your use of the word like happens to be? Oh yeah, it seems, like, it seems like they're just connected in the sense that if it were an actual person, yeah. it would, we would call it love, it would be love. Right. But it's just that they 
if they're two completely different things, they're all only linked in this muscle. Oh, I see what you're asking. Okay. Yeah. So I think that's what the Raman is trying to overcome with that last sem- sentence. Is he saying that that um, that this is like a spillover from your grasp of God? That if you grasp the truth and reality of God's existence, and that is a source of enjoyment, then you will naturally uh, call to others uh, to try to get them to recognize the truth that you've done. And that's the weird thing about it. if you've noticed the uh, the verbs that he's been using here. Um, when he first introduced it, he said, uh, So the mitzvah is, includes that we should call out to other people. And then he says, when you love someone, then you will, you will do this. So too, if you recognize Hashem, you will do this. He, it almost is being talked about, again, like an outgrowth of, of following the mitzvah or like a natural result. And that that's maybe what it means when he says it includes this, because I don't think there is a, I mean, again, we'll see when we look at the Mishnah Torah, but he doesn't seem to say that there's like a chiyuv to proselytize, you know, like there's no chiyuv to do that. Right. It's just like a natural result of the fact that uh, of this degree of ahava, hmm. I think. I'm not sure though, we'll have to investigate that. So I, I, you see what I'm, saying? I'm, trying, yeah. I'm saying that they are unified, you know, and he's pointing out that in, in human, uh, a human relationship is also unified, that when you love someone a lot, then you do like, you try to like, get other people to recognize how great this person is. So is he saying internally the uh, experience of Abba is probably similar to like Abba of a person? Or it's just... I, I think that's the emphasis internally, uh, but yeah. it's going to express itself externally in the second way, but not the first way. Can you just pick up on it? Yeah, yeah. The last one. Uh, meaning that internally, when you love a person, you have enjoyment and you also call other people to their friendship. And when you love Hashem, uh-huh. you have an enjoyment, which is internal, but then you also call other people to... Right. So even though it's a different kind of love, it still produces the same outcome. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and, and the, other, the other route to answering your question, by the way, which, which I don't know for sure, though, is that it's like one way to look at the relationship between human love and love of God is like it's an analogy. But the other way to look at it is that there is the human capacity for love and that's where this myth of Ava Hashem resides, meaning that, that it is actually utilizing the same psychological phenomenon, even though it's through a different route because it's through the intellect, you know, um, but like that maybe it is the same emotion, you know. Right, right, right. I think that makes more sense. I think that makes more sense also. Then it wouldn't be like happens to be or like model well, after. He does say it's a muscle. He does say they're muscle. Well, because you, it's not in the same way. Because even if you're like feeling the same love that you feel for another human, it, it, just the reality is it's different because it's, you're, you're loving a not a tangible right. physical thing. You're not, it's not, you're not and it's what not you're human, calling the pe- different. right, not, I mean, even if it's not like uh clear that it's different, it seems like it's the exact same way, mm-hmm. it just is different. Uh, right. Maybe not to be saying, but also the the thing that you're, and I agree with everything you're saying, but the the thing that you're calling them to also is different because here it's la avodaso and munabo, uh, and with the friendship uh, with the uh, human, it's li do so, you know. Right. So, and that's a comment on, 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 on what the uh, outcome is, not on the feeling necessarily, like, you know, like yeah. the feeling of, oh, this being is great and I want to share, mm-hmm. you know, that's like that, that might be the same thing, yeah. Okay. Should we make this into a sheer sheer and Bikia sheer? <laughs> I mean, that's really what, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> every, I'd say every year I try to break into it. Uh-huh. I've not succeeded yet. Really? Yeah, but it's like, you know, of the Shalom Melch trifecta, that's the elusive one. Right, right. Yeah, it's also the hardest. I mean, it is the hardest. Isn't but there a that comes Yeah, but I don't, I'm not, I like it as a, an intellectual exercise, but I don't think it's, I mean, I mean, I, I don't think the way he, because he takes it as a, Shir Shem is like an instruction manual for setting up a curriculum to arrive at, at Ava Hashem. Uh-huh. Um, and it feels a little raw bog forced. In the same way that like the raw bogs explanations of certain other chukim right. feel raw bog forced, that they're very creative and they're very, and the ideas are true. Um, but like, I wonder how much is being, uh, you know, being forced. <laughs> That's my own subjective thing. And again, I can't say it for sure because I haven't learned it, but it's, it's a great commentary though on it. Um, but yeah, cool. yeah. And I, but that's, that's the big problem also with Shir is I don't know how detailed the Mashalim, uh, the Nimshal is, you know, uh, but he takes it very detailed. So, yeah. Okay. Onward in the mitzvah, in the Sefer Mitzvahs. 
Um, right, so you'll call all of the, uh, it's funny also, the, I always think it's funny, you'll call all the simpletons and fools to the knowledge of the truth that you knew. Like, why just simpletons and fools? Right, like, not just the average person. Yeah, yeah, not right. Not a fool, but he just doesn't know. Yeah, so right. I make a conscious effort to know. Like, uh, but it's also, I, I guess my, my question, I mean, because you could say that he means the average person by simple and fool, you know, oh, okay. Um, okay, but, <laughs> you know, wrong doesn't mince words. But the thing, the, the question I have is that, um, that and, and technically Saha, by the way, is not the same as Kseel. Like Saha, I think is an ignoramus. Uh -huh. So it's, it's much, sense. yeah, um, like someone who lacks knowledge. Um, but my question is why the emphasis on people who, who lack knowledge? Why not all people? Because really, it's not like you're just going to, it's not like Avram Avinu is going to stop when someone who didn't know about Hashem now knows about him. No, he's going to keep on, you know, uh, bringing people closer to Yedias Hashem no matter what. So be more in, like inclusive, you know. But it would definitely be optimal if you uh, focus on the people that didn't know. I mean, right. If you could. Like, yeah, yeah. It would be optimal. So yeah, I mean, they're definitely first priority. Right. But I guess, right, you couldn't really know. So I'm not really sure. Let me, let me use it. Uh, Okay, well, okay, I was going to give an analogy, but maybe this answers the question. Mm. I was going to say in the human muscle, mm -hmm. um, it's not just that you talk to, about your friends to people who don't, don't know them, you know, right. you like talk about it with everyone, right. but, but maybe that is the point of the muscle is that like, right. you're, you're going after people. On a specific thing here. Yeah. We're trying to accomplish a goal and the best way to accomplish it is to focus on people that don't know. Right. Yeah. Definitely could be. All right. The Lushan Sifri, the Ahavta Es Hashem. Oh, yeah. So, oh, here's his source now. Okay. The Ahavta Es Hashem. I don't know exactly how to vowelize this. Ahavehu al Habrios. Make him beloved to people. Okay. So, that's the Sifri. That's the source of what he just said here. Uh, Avraham Avino. Uh, Avicha. Like Avram uh, Avicha. Okay. Shnamar of Esanefeshur Asa Bukharan. As it says, the souls that he made in Haran. Um, which, according to Unglos, uh classic shot is the uh, students that he taught, right? Uh, Klomar, meaning to say, Kamosha Avraham Lafisha Haya Ohev, Kamosha Haida Kasav Avraham Ohavi, just like Avraham, who was a beloved, or I'm sorry, Ohev, who was a lover of God, one who loved God, as the Pasuk testifies, Ohavi, my beloved one, Vize Meotum Hasagaso, this is due to the strength of his comprehension. Kara Espene Adam Le Emuna Mitoke Ahavaso. Uh, and Avram called people to reliance on God out of the power of his love. So too, you should make him beloved until you called him. I'm just going to make sure I got the all the conjugations right here. <laughs> um, this says, uh, as the Sifre says, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God. This means that you should make him beloved of man as Abraham your father did, as it is stated in the souls that they had gotten in Haran. That is to say, just as Abraham being a lover of the Lord, as scripture testifies, Abraham, my friend, um, uh, by the power of his conception of God and out of his great love for him, summon mankind to believe, so too you must, uh, so too must you, so you too must so love him. <laughs> Odd syntax as to summon mankind uh, uh, into, unto him. Huh. Yeah. And Abraham is called Oh, Havi. Oh, Havi because he loved God? Yeah, was... right? It sounds like the other way around, right? It sounds like, yeah. oh, Havi, if God calls you Oh, Havi, it's because God loves you. Right. But he's saying, which makes it sound, sound like because Avram loved God this much. Well, and from that, it sounds like because he had a lot of knowledge. Not yeah. God. Well, yes, that's true. That's true. But he's saying, though, that because of his Hasaga, then he's called Oh, Havi, which if you put it together with what he said before, it sounds like the Hasaga... Led to. Yeah, 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 led to is uh -huh. the basis of the Ava, yeah. All right, so there's a lot here, but I think now we have to go to the Mishnah Torah, and then, then we'll start trying to resolve everything, okay? Um, solve the entire Sagid today. <laughs> no. Uh, okay, so, uh, oh, yeah, you got to get a wrong, yeah. Sefer Hamada. Yeah, And I'm just going to open yeah. mine. Oh, 
Uh, no, uh, uh, Hamada. Maybe I said Allah by mistake, but it's, it's Hamada. <laughs> yeah. See, again, the the Allah Torah is not right. It, it, see, Isaac it, it <laughs> breaks it up in the wrong way. Oh my God, Isaac's on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're, we're switching. What? Yeah. I actually don't have it in front of me, so. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't know how it's breaking up, it, breaking up incorrectly. Yeah, you, you can check it out later. Okay. So, I mean, I guess that's exactly the issue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is exactly the issue. Yeah. Okay, so um, here we go. We have Hakel Hanichbad Vhanora Hazeh. You got the place? Okay. Oh, um, really quickly. You don't have to change your pages or anything like that. But I'm pretty sure in the Coseras it is no, it's Lohovo, and in, the, in I think in the um, in the what do you call it? Uh, the Minion and Mitos. I think it's just Lohovo. I'm just gonna check it out, but uh, just be sure. With the um, the thing. That's the same as the Minion. Uh, the Chalukas Svarim is the same as the Coseras. Oh, okay. yeah. And the is Lavo, yeah, fine. Okay, so Hakel Hanechbat Vahanor Hazeh, this uh, revered and awesome God, mitzvah la'ohavo uliyira mimeno. It is a mitzvah to love him and to be in awe of him or to fear him. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think those are the same word, but it is weird that we have different ones. Shnemar v'ahavta es Hashem alakacha, as it says, you should love Hashem your God. V'nemar, um, and it says, es Hashem alakacha tira. You shall revere or fear your God, Hashem your God. Okay, so what is the derech to love of him and fear of him? So that's also interesting, by the way, that there's a derech. Hmm. Why? Because that mitzvah, typically there's a mitzvah. Hmm. There's no like derech to the mitzvah. Right. And oh, we, right. right, and we didn't, there's, there's no derech in um, the first two mitzvahs. It's Yediyas Davar Zeh Mitzvah Saseh and Yediyas Davar Zeh Mitzvah Saseh. Right. Uh, and there's a Maisa HaMitzvah for the Losa say, or a Maisa Iser of uh, being Male Al Dato. So this is not a Maisa HaMitzvah. This is a derech to this result, this activity. He's saying what the derech is. Oh, he's going to say, he's asking the question. How, yeah, I was just commenting on the fact that, they're very, that there is a derech. That's weird. You know, what's the derech to Natilas Lulav? There's no derech. You just do it, you know? Right. Yeah. Uh, oh, weird that he's been, like mixing them together. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. The, clearly, he. he Clearly, in the Mishnah Torah, holds that these are two sides of the same coin, and that's why we are going to read both of them now. Um, okay, Bishashi is bonin haadam b'masav uvruv hanifloim hagadolim. At a time, at the time when man strives to understand or contemplates his actions, masav could either be actions or works, uvruv hanifloim hagadolim, and his uh, wondrous and great creations. And he sees from them his wisdom, God's wisdom, which has no comparison and no end. Miad, who ohev, oh, he's violating the rule of using a uh, word in his definition, right? What is the Oh, this is in the derech. It's not a definition, right? Immediately he loves. Um, umfa'er, umisa'ava, tava gadola, leda hashem hagadol. Immediately he loves praises, glorifies, and desires a great desire to know the great name. Kamosha and Amar David, as David said, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Okay? He's saying Ahava is one of those things. Yes. And all these other things that aren't part of the Mitzvah. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's uh, another thing that struck me funny about Ohev. Yeah. Um, and when he is machashiv about these things, okay, so when he thinks about these things, and again, we uh, we did this at the very, very beginning, I think. I forgot what led us there, but the difference between machashiv and uh, misbonin, that these are two different activities of the mind. Didn't we talk about this? I don't know. Yeah. Um, so, because uh, in the Shemona program, he defines the difference. Uh, so we may have to go into that. Uh, that's probably going to be a tomorrow thing when we do uh, Yerushalayim. When, when he... Uh, 
thinks about these same things, meaning the Masav Ubrov Haniflam and Gadolim, Miad who Nirtalaharav, he immediately recoils backwards. Vira Vifrad Vieda Shubiria Katana Shvela Afela Ome Bedas Kalam Utalipne Tamim Deos. Love that. Uh, he recoils backwards and he fears and trembles and knows that he is a small creature, dark and uh, lowly and dark, standing with a frail mind, thus uh, a frail and, and, and minute mind before Tamim Deo, so a being who is perfect in knowledge. Commotion Amar David, like David said, ki erashamacha dot 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 ma enosh ki So we've got to look at this in context here because. Um, uh, it's relevant. Uh, till an eight. So it says, I'm just going to read it here. You don't need to get it off. Um, Ki era shamecha mase et When I see your heavens, the work of your fingers, yareach v'kochavim asher konanta, the moon and the stars that you have uh, established, ma enosh kisis kareno uven adam kisif kadeno. What is man that you should re- remember him and what is the son of man that you should notice him? But you made him a little bit lower than, than the angels uh, and glory and splendor you crowned him with. Uh, yeah, so that, that's the, uh, the full context there. Okay, so we have, uh, we have our work cut out for us because you can notice there's a lot of differences between this and the Sefer Mitzvot, like I was uh, saying, <laughs> right? So um, let me just share the screen in a way where I could flip back and forth between them. Um, so we have, first of all, so l- let's, count, let's count the ways. So what are the differences between the uh, Sefer Mitzvot Ava Sashem and the uh, Mishnah Torah Ava Sashem? Well, the first, well, I'm not the first, but he doesn't mention anything about the death in the- That's also true. Right. Yeah, 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 that's true, right? So how does he introduce it in the Sefer Mitzvot? Shnei Sevim al Ahavaso, Vuhu. Yeah. Right, just to do it. Just do it, man. Just to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so like everything else, like we're saying. Yeah, right, right. right. There's a derech, yeah. Right? Although it's funny because he describes a derech in Sefer Mitzvah. That's what we were noticing before, that there's there's Mizbonin, right. not, and then Hasaga, and then Oneg, and then Ahava. But yeah, he doesn't call it a derech. Right. It's not a method. Like I would say method, I say derech means method here, right? right. I mean path, but method. But it's possible he meant the same thing. He just didn't use Yeah, word. yeah, that's possible. Yeah. True, but yeah. I definitely didn't notice the sequential thing until this reading through. And, and I, I think the question on the Mishnah Torah and the phenomenon here, you know, Helps to make a click. click. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. But there are still other things that yes. are not like, um, Also that we mentioned it, but just that he mixes up here and Abba. He doesn't do that in there. I mean, I don't know how he would do that. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's that, that one I also don't think is, a, is such a big question just because the, he is doing each one individually. And he puts them next to each other, which is the closest they could do. Right. But, but yeah, good observation for the Mishnah Torah though. I mean, the main difference is the emphasis on mitzvos and Torah mm-hmm. in the Sefer and mitzvos, and no mention of it in the Mishnah Torah. In the Mishnah Torah, it's only um, Maasav Ubruv Haniflaim Hagadolim. Well, it's in the beginning that it's a mitzvah. Or no, but the end, say, right, you don't get it through the mitzvos, right? right. Yeah. yeah. And then in the in the in the Sefer mitzvos, it's unclear. So mitzvosav and sivuyav is clearly talking about Torah. Pu'ulosav is a very ambiguous term. Does what Pula, does that mean so it means, so Pula is like an activity, but it also means a, 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 a thing you produce. Let me see how Chevelle translates it. He translates it as his works, hmm. you know? Hmm. So, so it's not like he's excluding the, uh, the universe from uh, Sefer Mitzvos, but he's definitely making Mitzvos more prominent in the Sefer Mitzvahs, that and the Vahayu HaDvarim HaEle, and the Dvarim HaEle are Mitzvahs. Right. Mm-hmm. By the way, there, there's, there's another reference to the Derech, is Yodei Ani Ketzad Oev Asamachum, how do I love God, right. you know, and, and then Vahayu HaDvarim HaEle, yeah. Yeah, right. it's not using the word Derech, but it right. is a, uh, you know. It lines up. Yeah. And then clearly the other difference is the um, nothing in the Mishnah Torah about calling other people to yeah. recognize God. Uh, this sounds like a solitary uh, mm-hmm. experience in, um, in the Sefer Mitzvos, sorry, in the Mishnah Torah, whereas Sefer Mitzvos will include like reaching out to other people. Right, but he doesn't specify in Mishnah Torah that not 
without other people. <laughs> no, <laughs> that'd be even weirder. <laughs> and by the way, yeah. keep it to yourself. But you know what he does? Really you know, I mean, he, he, no, he doesn't do it exactly. I mean, he does it in several places, but not, yeah, not here. Yeah. Well, where he says like not the shirt. Well, I mean, we saw it in the, uh, in the um, definition of uh, itikad. He concluded with the imru um, bilvavchem al mishkavchem v'domu selah that you should think about it in your heart on your bed and be silent and not express what you've comprehended. <laughs> yeah, I mean, plain shot though is that that's like stuff that other people are not ready to hear. Right, so right. yeah. And if you don't have a full grasp on that, you're not gonna be able to properly explain. Right. Now here's where I'm in conflict, um, which is the other place he talks about Ahavas Hashem is in Hilchos Tshuva mm-hmm. at the end. Now that's a different context entirely. That's not the mitzvah, but that is the uh, the phenomenon of Ovid Me'ahava. And I feel like if we're going to be responsible Rama Bikios learners, mm-hmm. then we should at least read that and see what of it is relevant, what of it is not. Yeah. So should we do that? Yeah. Okay, so let's go to Sefer Hamada, Hilchos Tshuva. It's actually the very end of Hilchos Tshuva, chapter 10. And we have to do the whole chapter. Oh, I think so, because, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, why did I ever think we were going to do Avashan and your session today? <laughs> how did we ever get through today? Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> So the, just the sequence in terms of, of where this is coming from is chapter eight was talking about Olam Haba uh, and Karius, which is the true reward and punishment. Chapter nine is talking about the brachos and the klalos, which are helpers to get us to the true reward. Um, and then we get to chapter 10, which is uh, gonna start off with how we relate to the brachos and klalos. Okay. And then he's gonna go on from there. Um, got it, Mati? Okay. Uh, all Yomar Adam, person should not say, Harni Osiam, Mitzvah Satora, Osek Bachak Masa, Kadesh Akabo Habrakas, Aksuvas Batora, O Kadesh SK Lachai Lamova. Person should not say, Behold, no one starts off a sentence with Behold anymore, but uh, I am going to do the Mitzvah of the Torah and be involved in its wisdom so that I will receive the, the blessings that are written in the Torah or that I merit life in the, in the world to come. The Ephros Minha Veros, Shehis here, Torah Mehen, Kadesh and Natsel Minha Klalos, Aksuvas Batora, O Kadesh Lo Ikaris Mechaya Holon Haba. Or I will separate from the transgressions that the Torah warns against um, in order that I escape from the curses that are written in the Torah or in order that I not get cut off from life in the world to come. He's saying people shouldn't do this. Or should not do this. People do this. No, he's should, saying people shouldn't. Do he's this. saying people should not do this, right? In Roy Lavo does the He knew you were going to ask that question. In Roy Lavo does the I'll dare so. Person, it's not proper for a person to serve Hashem in this way. who Ovid Miira. Person who serves in this way is a servant out of fear. Oh, you know, I, I'm also glad we're doing it for this reason because this is also talking about a different aspect of Yiras Hashem. The Ina Ma'alas Hanavim. And that is not the level of the Nevi'im, and it is not the level of the Chachamim. Okay, yeah. The in is weird, right? Yeah, I know, it's very, very weird. Um, the in Ovid es Hashem al derech zo el ame arts v'hanashim v'haktanim. And the only ones who serve God in this way are the ignoramuses and the women and the children. Shemachanchin osan la'avod mi'ira, that we train them uh, or habituate them now that we know what the Ramah's definition of Chinuch is from the Pirish Mishnayos that the footnote referenced when we did Hanukkah, <laughs> um, we train them, we habituate them to serve out of fear. Until their minds expand. Um, and I don't know if this is Das like knowledge or Das like psyche. I'm actually, I think I'm leaning to the, the psyche thing because based on his uh, explanation of this in, in Chelek. And they'll serve out of love. Okay, so now he starts to talk about what it is to serve God out of love. Ovid me'ava, one who serves out of love. Osik bator uva mitzvos, v'holik b'nesivos ha'chokma. Yeah. You said, when you mean psyche, you mean like that they're not like mentally prepared for this, not that they don't have knowledge for it. Yeah, that they're they're psychologically uh, not mature enough to... Even if you gave them the knowledge, they wouldn't be able to like process it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meaning that the emphasis emphasis is on the level of... uh, of, uh, of yeah, of psychological development more okay. so. I mean, it happens to be that the psychological development is is uh, through learning, but but it's, yeah, it's not like you can just give them the knowledge. Um, but I feel mm. like it's both also because it's, it's they're that they're like that, and it's also it's also 
I don't know what the word is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I'll, I'll, I'll pick up knowledge, on what you said. That's why the word mind is really good in English because the word mind um, uh, encompasses intellect and also like state of mind, like, right. uh, like psyche, you know? Hmm. So my, mind, until their minds mature, I guess. Right. Right. Okay. One who serves out of love he does um, is involved in Torah and mitzvot and walks on the paths of wisdom. Not because of anything in the world. Not uh, out of fear of harm and not in order to inherit the good. Rather, he does the good, the true, what is true because it is true. And the good will ultimately come of its own accord. I don't know package deal. I don't know how you want to say bichlal, you know. Um, but, right, it's funny that you says that, because that's not, like, why do you care about that? Yeah, that's right. why you're doing it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah, the person who's actually doing it because it's, it's true will not need to read that last part, <laughs> you know. Umala zo hi mala gadola ad od. This level is a very great level. Vein kol chacham zochala. And not every chacham uh, attains it. See, uh, I remember. I mean, Rafael has given many shirim on this, but uh, but I, I remember the the biggest problem he pointed out is um, you know the Ram starts off this paragraph by saying like never serve God out of fear. That's a low level, and then now he's saying but serving God on a out of love is a very high level. Not even every chacham gets. It's like what am I supposed to do? Right. You know, <laughs> um, and he says vihi malas avram avino. So like, don't do anything except be like Avram Avino, <laughs> but that's very hard, and you're not going to get there. Right. You know. <laughs> um, yeah, also, just what, what does he mean? Uh, what's true? Like that God is true. So th that's this is the other. Yeah, that's the other difficult thing. Is um, in fact, I'm gonna okay. I, I, <laughs> I'm not gonna. Get, I'm not gonna allow myself to get tempted to uh, do the entire parent Sorry, that's not maybe that's not really not right now. But if I want to read the equivalent phrase. Um, that he said here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, and they reached Halacha Gimel in the spring. <laughs> um, the equivalent phrase in. You really think we'll get that far? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's optimistic. Um, uh, when he says the Os MS um, so in the Mishnah Torah, he says, um, when he defines this, he says, The only purpose of truth is to know that it is true. And the mitzvos are true, and therefore their uh, their purpose is their fulfillment. What does that mean? Yeah. So the, the difficulty is the way he's using the word true, because we've seen the word true. When we said when, when, earlier when he used the word true for Hashem Elokim MS. So there we said, in that context, it means reality. And then when we use the word true in terms of like true false test or true false, uh, false idea, we mean a, a statement or an idea that corresponds with reality. But then to say, do the truth, well, how are we using the word true there, you know? Right, right. right like, I mean, the American legal system also is a system that exists. Yeah, like, right, it doesn't just mean existence, right? right. Yeah. Maybe he means truth to mean like doing things in the best way possible, but he could be saying the best way possible. Like, it's not true. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, not referring sure. to the mitzvahs. Like this is the way to do it. Any other way is not this way, which isn't the truth. Yeah, well, that that fits in best with what I just read in in, in Chelak that the mitzvahs are emes, but still, it's a weird phrase that like an idea can be true, but what does it mean the mitzvahs are truth? Yeah. Right. I'll, also, they don't refer to any. It's not like it's a. They correspond. To anything. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So what does it mean? Right. I mean, I have my theories, <laughs> but uh, but uh, let's keep that out for now. Uh, okay. Um, uh, let's keep that out for now. Yeah. Just just uh, even though we're going beyond in terms of Ava. Going into the sugya of lishma and shalom lishma, which this is very wrapped up in, right. might take us a little too far afield. Okay. I, I don't know if we're going to need to for that. Because here's the other thing, uh, and I, I guess I, I, you know, I'll, I'll say this question now, but like, presumably the mitzvah of avas Hashem and Yiras Hashem can be done by all people. But this Ovid me'ava 
seems like it can't be done by all people. You know? You're saying they, the person could have Ava in Europe, but then still do the mitzvahs out of Europe. Yeah, Ava. yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's good. That's a more precise way to put it. Yeah, and I'm only assuming that because the mitzvahs of uh, Ava and Yira are like important mitzvahs that were commanded by God. He didn't command everyone to be an Ovin Me'ava. Like, you know, like that's not like part of Tariyag. So I'm just assuming a certain like basic ability for the average Jew to uh, fulfill the mitzvah, you know? Right. And that's, I, I, and this is one of the big problems with, uh, I, I heard a rumor that the Abravanel in his book, uh, Rosh Amana, um, that's one of his questions he raises on the Ramam's definition of Avas Hashem as a mitzvah, because he says, you're really telling me that, that the average Jew can like contemplate ast astronomy and physics and like attain this level? Like, no. So I don't remember. We have to look into it. People should try harder. Yeah, it's just they're clearly not trying harder. Yeah, right, right. Right. Look, even Moshe is it. All I'm asking, all God wants from you is that you love Hashem, is that you fear Hashem. No, right? It's a small thing. Yeah, okay. But so nevertheless, though, I still feel like even though this is not synonymous with the mitzvah, it's going to fill out the picture of what ahava as a phenomenon is, which might help us to understand what he meant in the, uh, in the, in the mitzvah. Okay, so where are we at? He malas Avram Avinu, right? It's the love of Avram Avinu. Shekaro HaKadosh Baruch Ohavo, that God called him my beloved. Because he only served God out of love. Oh, so now that's different than the explanation he gave in the Sefer Mitzvahs. Because in the Sefer Mitzvahs, God called him my beloved because of his level of knowledge of God. This is because of how he served God. Those are yeah, two... Like he, right, he's definitely saying two different things, but it carries over from what he's been saying up until now, that the knowledge will lead to the love. So uh, he had a lot of knowledge, and then he served him out of love. Check that. Right, yeah, yeah, it is consistent. Yeah, yeah, you're right. He is saying different things, but... Yeah, yeah, consistent. I hear. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. Um... Vihi hamala shetzivanu. Oh no! Now he's commanding it. Vihi hamala shetzi. I just said that God didn't command us to be over me'ava. Vihi hamala shetzivanu ba hakadosh baruch hu al yedei Moshe Rabbeinu shenamar v'ahavta es Hashem ukacha. So that itself would not be. But then he goes on and says b'chol levav b'chol nafshah b'chol meodacha. I think that's what he means, right? Like if it just says v'ahavta es Hashem ukacha, that's just the tivui an ava Hashem. But commanding you b'chol levavcha u'b'chol nafshah b'chol meodacha. That's the level of being over me'ava. Yeah. Oh, see, now there's another chain, right? So now we got five steps. It says, once you, in the time when you love Hashem properly, with a proper love, immediately you will do all the mitzvahs out of love. See, that's also even hard to understand because it sounded like earlier he was saying that what makes you on the proper level of love of God is that you're doing all the mitzvahs out of love. But now it sounds like an effect. Wait, wait, wait. Say that because he said in the beginning of the same halacha, yeah. uh, he only served God out of love. Okay. So if I, if, if you said, what does it mean he only served God out of love is he did his mitzvot, you know, okay. his mitzvot out of love, right? Okay. Okay. But then he ends by saying, and if you get to this level of ava, then, then immediately you will do all the mitzvot out of love. Wasn't that what made you on this level? The fact that you did all the mitzvot out of love? No, that's what made you on the level of ovin me'ava. That you do. Isn't that what he's saying? Well, Is no, he talking? Saying if you have Ava, then you will be an Ovid Ava. You can't be a real okay oh, without being right. an Uh-huh. Okay, so the Ava. order is you oh, okay, fine. So knowledge, Ava. But but okay, but yeah, yeah. Let's follow the chain here. So he starts off by saying Ma'ala Zo, he ma'ala good Allah mode. Now that's the the level of Ovid me Ava. Yes. The in Kokham Zochala. He ma'alas Avram Vino. That's the level of Avram Vino. Shakara Kadosh Baruch Hu Ovo Lefi Shalot Avat Ela Me'ava. Because he only served God out of love. The he hamaala shetzivanu ba Hakadosh Baruch Hu Al Yidei Moshe Vino. It is the level that God commanded through Moshe. Right. The Havta Asher Shemakach B'Chol Levav B'Chol Nafshah B'Chol Meodacha. So we've only been talking about the level of of love uh, of serving God out of love now. That's what the mitzvah is. He hamaala. Shetzivanu right. ba hakadosh like baruch yeah, who? Exactly <laughs> Isn't it? No, but wait, 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 wait. But maybe he's just saying we're commanded in Ava and you can't actually do Ava without just necessarily doing it over the Ava. Yeah, I can make See? up my own Ramam soon. <laughs> no, no, sorry. Say, 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 say it again. Say it again. Say it again. I didn't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, we're commanded in Ava. Yeah. And Ava just definitionally means 
oh, it means you're going to be an Obi Wan also. No, right? but it's still, I, I, I don't think that's true. He's, he's saying that there's a difference. There are people that have this Allah Shem, but then they don't necessarily. No, no, they're not. Be. This man say you you have as a as a Shem Ahava Ruya the idea of Sikh Mitzvah Shem. Well, I think here he's talking that's... about the Ahava that Avram had. Right. That, which is different than uh, the regular person's of uh, who maybe still serves God out of fear and not out of love. Uh, uh, yeah, in other words, have without being right. out. yes, yeah, he, he yeah, that, that, and that we know from from exists. from Yisodei Torah. Right. Why? Because it doesn't even talk about how well, your what your motives are in order to fulfill that mitzvah or in Sefer Mitzvahs. Wait, no, that was just talking about Ava. That was yeah, yeah, about right. Yeah, that's that's my point, right? Is there? It's just saying that you the way to love God, the direct to loving God, is by contemplating His actions and blah blah blah. Sure. Okay. Right. So so that, so that gets you Ava, but just because you you have that doesn't mean that you are going to do be an Ovid Meava. Well, it seems from here he's saying that it's that you have, Unless, you have proper Ava. From here he's, he's talking it. about Avram's Ava. If you have it's the different. proper, okay. Well, so then then. I don't understand then. So then you're gonna maybe I'm just like being like the brought now, but like so then isn't gonna turn out that no one can fulfill the mitzvah of Avas Hashem except no, people like Avram. Same question that you had before about Ovi Me Avah. No, but I answered it before. <laughs> no, no, I know this is a stronger question because he never he, Ram never says. Okay, a uh, brought now's question is the Ram's description of Avas Hashem makes it sound like a very high level. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. My question was uh, my question now is. It sounds from the Rama's presentation in the Sefer Mitzvos and in the um, Yesodia Torah that fulfilling the mitzvah of Avas Hashem is within everyone's reach. Not everyone, but it's, it's within within human reach. Because and, and that's number one. And number two is the fulfillment of that mitzvah does not require that you have a certain motive in keeping mitzvos. Um, and that's what you're saying when you say that uh, you right, can still you can be an Ovid Yira, but still, but still fulfill the mitzvah of loving God. Right. And so the problem is. But then you're not. So, so the problem. So you're the, still missing Ovid. And, and, and that's and he ha ma'ala shetzivanu baha kadosh baruch That's the problematic statement because that's saying God didn't only command us to love God; He commanded us to sure. reach the level of Ovid me'ava. I see. And if it weren't for that link. Then I think I would not have uh, problems because then you could say right. being an Ovid Me'av is one thing and fulfilling the mitzvah of Avas Hashem is another thing. Right. But you agree that he is saying there's a link. Yes, he is okay. saying that there's a link. Yeah. That's, that's all I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. 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 And and you would agree that the Mala Shetzivanaba is a Ma'ala of Ovid Me'av. Um, that he commanded. Well, I guess it's, it has to be both because they're connected. But I don't know. I mean, I guess. I guess so. it, it, uh, linguistically, mala zohi, mala gadola ad maod. I guess so. Vihi yeah. yeah. mala yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And now, how do you answer my question again? Oh no, no. So let me just say the other question. The other question that I asked first was, if you get to the level. Oh, I was saying, doesn't. What makes you, into an Ovid Me'ava, that's if everything you do is out of uh, out of love. And then, but the Ram says, once you reach the proper love, then you'll do everything out of love. And so the answer to that question is the fact that in the last sentence, he's only talking about the level of Ahava. And if you get that level of Ahava, then you'll do all the mitzvahs out of love. Yeah. Right. And he already told us how to get to the level of Ahava, which yeah. is through knowledge. Yeah. And now he defines what it is though. The case is he Ahava Haru'ya. And... <laughs> And this is where uh, this this next thing is the most related to Yisodei Torah because now he's not talking about what's the level of Ovid Meava. This is what is Avas Hashem. Okay, Ketet Hiha Ava Haruuya. What is the the proper love? Who she yo? You see, it's Val is Yohav. Yeah, that's weird, right? Achi Yohav. Who she Yohav es Hashem Ava Gadola Yisera Raba. Do you love Hashem? Big love, lots, lots, <laughs> right? <laughs> How are you uh, <laughs> translate it? <laughs> um, Aza Adna Od, very strong. Until your soul, his soul is bound up in Avas Hashem. Vinimsa Shoge Ba Tamid, and he is constantly immersed in it. Now, does yours say Ke'elu Chole? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Ke'elu Chole Ha'ava. Because I think the first time I read this, a long time ago, I thought it was Ke'elu Chole. 
but it's, it's like those who are lovesick, I think is the translation. So like those who are lovesick. Uh, that, um, it's where he switches from plural to singular. <laughs> it should be that his, whatever, his mind is not free from the love of that woman that he is uh, immersed in constantly. I mean, he's immersed in that love constantly. Whether he's lying down or whether he's, he's uh, rising up. Whether he's eating, uh, and that time he's eating. Your love of Hashem, the love of Hashem in the, love, in the heart of his loved ones, of those who love him should be more than this. And they should be constantly immersed in it. As it says, with all your heart and all your soul. This is what Shlomo Melch said by way of allegory. I am lovesick. All of is an allegory for this. Yeah. Um, okay, then he says, the early sages said, Shema Tomar, uh, maybe a person will say, Harini Lome Torah Bishvil Shehe Ashir. Maybe I'll learn Torah, so I'll become rich. Bishvil Shekre Rebbe, so I'll be called Rebbe. Bishvil Shekabel Sakhar Bolam Haba, so then I'll receive reward in the next world. Tom Lomar, Ava Hashem. But the Pasuk says, to love Hashem. Kosh Atem Osim Lotasim El Me Ava. Everything that you do, you should only do out of love. The Odam Rukhamim, the Mitzvosav Chavitz Maod. That uh, the Chachamim also said that David said he desires his mitzvos exceedingly. Bin mitzvosav, he desires his mitzvos, below basachar mitzvosav, not the reward of his mitzvos. Um, the great chachamim would command the most understanding of their students and those who comprehended uh, the oneness of God. Oh, he changes the lushan of the Mishnah there. Uh, don't be like servants who serve the master with the intent to receive good. Rather be like servants who serve their master uh, with the intent uh, to receive nothing. Rather, because he is the, the Rav, it is proper to serve him. Klomar, meaning to say, serve him out of love. I think we will finish this today just for the facts and we'll have to go back and work on everything and answer everything tomorrow. Anyone who is involved in Torah to receive reward or to not uh, suffer uh, uh, retribution, that person is involved in it not for its own sake. Uh, anyone who's involved in it, not out of fear, not to receive reward, but out of the love of the Lord of the earth who commanded it, then this person is involved in it for its own sake. The Chachamim said, a person should always be involved in Torah, even not for its own sake, because out of, not for its own sake, he'll come to doing it for its sake. Another question here also, by the way, is what's the relationship between Ava, Yura, and Ovid Ava and Yura, and then Shalol Lishma and Lishma. They're clearly correlated. And in Chalik, he says that they're the same, but he presents it in a different order here. And like, you know, like it felt like at Halacha Hey. We departed from the topic of Ovid Me'ava, oh, sorry, um, Halakha Dalid. We departed from the topic of, of Ovid Me'ava right. and started talking about something else, which is like Lishma, Lo Lishma, but now he's going to swoop back in a second. Lefikach, therefore, Kishimalamdim es Akhtanim es Hanashim v'chalal Amayar. It's therefore when we, when we teach the uh, the kids, the women, and the uh, the general uh, rabble, in Malamdin Osan Ela La'ava Miyura. See, now he's saying that we do teach them, right? We, we, uh, we teach them to serve out of fear. See, so he's going back to over the year. Ukdele kabul schar, and in order to receive reward, until their minds mature, and they become exceedingly wise. There he's actually saying that they, they increase their wisdom. Um, we reveal the secret to them little by little. Which is also just very funny, given the fact that the Rama made it very clear that the Mishnah Torah is written for everybody. <laughs> And this is an open secret here, right? you know, like, um, but in truth, I have seen people give sheer on this to audiences that the Magi sheer who's giving it and the audiences who are hearing it are hearing it with their ear, but not really realizing the import of what the Ram is saying. So it is possible to like see this and it doesn't really like get to you, you know. And we accustom them to this idea gently. Until they grasp it and know it and serve out of love. Which is also interesting because it sounds like it's saying that this idea, there's an adjustment period that they're going to be grappling with this idea until they serve out of love. Hmm. But I feel like that's not true. I feel like there's a thing where you like don't have this idea, 
then you have the idea, but you haven't reached the level of Ovid Meava yet. And then like you get Ovid Meava through your knowledge. This sounds like a continuum. What's the first option? The, the oh. first option is it sounds like they're going to be in this process of coming to terms with this idea until they serve out of love. Yeah. Well, for example, <laughs> knowledge, they'll have more and more knowledge and eventually they'll come to serve out of love. Well, for example, uh, I myself uh, think that I know the, this idea, but I'm not an Ovi Meava. Right. Okay. So am I in this process of Margilin Osan Inyan Zeb Nahas Achi Asigu Uhubiovdu Meava? Like he makes it sound like that process of accustoming them gently to this idea is going to continue until they, they hit the Ava point. Oh, but I'm saying it's not. I'm saying like there's a point where you need to be accustomed to this idea, and then you get the idea, and then do something. You still have to. And, and then there's a lot more development until you reach the level of Ode Meava. It's not like you're yeah. constantly. Like, it doesn't just happen on its own. It's, it's making it sound like it, if you just learn it, but it just happen. Well, that's a uh, another good, but a different question than the one I'm asking. There's two ways to understand this phrase here. One is like you're saying, which is that if they keep on being accustomed to this idea, then eventually they will be brought to Ava. Right. And the question is, is, uh, is that true? All right? right. My question though, is there's, I'm saying that there's a phase where you don't know the idea. Then there's a phase of period. Okay. That's what I'd say where I'm at. Right. But then there's a long, long, long road until where I'm no longer being accustomed to this idea. I know it already. I see. But I haven't reached the level of Ovid Meava. Oh, okay. So and he's not explaining that long road. He's yeah, yeah. Oh, like, uh, yeah. equating, like, coming to terms with the idea with... With getting the Ava, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Nice. yeah. And it seems to me, like, no, you get the idea right. long before, yeah. and then you have the thing. All right, last halakha, and then we'll, we'll have to come back to this tomorrow. Oh, sorry, last, yeah, last halakha in the real count. Or no, last halakha in the fake count. Dever yadu barosh ain avas akadosh baruch nikshiras belibo shal adam. Yeah, he said, this is the fourth time he said that, <laughs> right? This is, uh, it's known and clear that the love of Akash Baruch is not bound up in a person's heart until he is immersed in it constantly. Karoi properly v'yazov kol olam chus mimena, and abandons everything in the world other than it. Kamosh tziva v'amar, as he commanded and said, v'chol levavcha v'chol nafshacha, with all your heart and all your soul. Ela b'deya sheyeda ehu, only with the knowledge with which you know him. Al pi hadea, al pi ha'ava. And in accordance with the knowledge uh, is the love. If a little, a little, if a lot, a lot. So it's proportionate. Therefore, a person needs to devote himself. And that's what I was raising my eyebrows before. Is it devote yourself or seclude yourself? Mm -hmm. like, like, I'm not sure exactly. Right. You know, yichud is like seclusion, but also like single-mindedly devote yourself. Lahavin lahaskil bachochmos. Utvunos to understand and to comprehend sciences and, and understandings, Hamudin Lo Eskono, who make known to him his creator, Kfikoch, Shiesh Adam Lahabin Lahasik, in accordance with the capacity of man to understand and to grasp. Kamosh Biyan Behilkos Yisodia Torah, like we mentioned in uh, explaining the Hilkos Yisodia Torah. Woo wee. Wait, so is he saying that, because he's saying that there's a level that you get to where you have Yerush Hashem and Ahal Hashem. But he's saying that when you reach that level, you should only ever act out of Ava Sashem. You should never act out of your Sashem. I'm not sure because right. that's confusing. Like what, what does that mean? Like you should preserve this fear, but then never ever ever act on that fear and only act on love. Like I mean he, I don't know if that's seemingly possible. Right. I mean, he definitely seems to say that in the beginning when he says it's not Roy to serve God out of fear, but then he also acknowledges that's very hard to not right. do that. And he's telling you to still fear God. He's not yeah, like, right. don't and, fear in God. Fact, you should be fearing God, but don't act on it. Right. And in fact, there is even a thing in uh, in Perge Avos, which he he comments on with the um on that Mishnah of all uh don't be like servants who serve the master to receive reward, right. uh, but be like servants who serve the master with the idea to not uh, to not receive reward. And it ends off that same Mishnah. I'm not even reading it. I don't know where it is. It's in chapter one, I think. It ends off with, oh yeah, here it is. Vihi mora shamayim alakim, and let the fear of heaven be upon you. Right. And the Ramam there, I believe, says that it means that, um, uh, that he says, uh, just one second. Um, Al tanihu es hayira lagamre. Don't abandon fear entirely. Right. Okay. Uh, uh, as it says, the fear of heaven should be upon you. Lefisha gamba Torah kavar nemar hatzivui al hayira, because the Torah also commands you on yira. Shnemar es Hashem el kachatira. Amru kachamim 
Avod me ava, avod me Serve out of love and serve out of fear. Vamru, right, I know. Vamru, and they said, Ohev lo yazniach es atzivui, v'hayari lo yavor al hazhara. The one who loves should not abandon the commandment, and one who fears should not transgress the prohibition. Yeah, so here it sounds like he is saying right. that they should be simultaneous, right. but and in the- There's a place for it, but here it doesn't sound like he's saying that. Yeah. Well, it seems like there's two kinds of fear, right? Like he's saying the fear of Yira is like in the Yisur Torah, the fear of this, the fear is like that you're a small uh, yeah. creature. It's not like about- well, Yeah, but then why is he talking about it in his commentary on this Mishnah, which seems to be talking about motives? Yeah. No, I think that that works perfectly. What you said, there's two different types of yira. There's the yira that uh, motivates you to do something out of fear, which is bad. Don't do that. And then there's the yira that you just uh, feel of like having awe and fear. Yeah, like but a powerful being. Which, right. Yeah. So that works in the Mishnah Torah, but I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Uh, a lot of problems here. A lot of questions. All right, All right let's stop for today. Yeah. <laughs> see, what, see what we do tomorrow. <laughs> All right. See ya. Thank you.